Welcome back. It is Saturday, April 15th in the NBA. My three favorite picks are on the way. Let's recap yesterday. An 0 2 day, man. That's three straight 0 2 days in a row. I'm pretty ice cold. Bam out of bio. Started off well, then nothing. Josh Giddy never really stood a chance either. It's, it's been a bad stretch. Look, last couple days have not been good. I said the NBA playoffs were tough. Don't think they're this tough. So, look, if I go 0 3 today, I'll wear a clown nose tomorrow because that's that just ain't happening. We're dialing in. We're getting back to the winning ways. We obviously had a great year all year long. I'm not going to let a couple 0 2 days discourage me. We're going to dial back in, dominate the rest of the postseason. You guys have my word. And it starts with this first pick. De'Aaron Fox over 0.5 points. Yes, this is on Sleeper. This is a free square. I'm not obviously going to track this towards my record, but I will take advantage of it at the end of the video. Look, it's a free square in the Warriors-Kings game up until tip-off of that game. You can take advantage of that. And if you sign up using our code COS, you get 100% deposit match up to 100 bucks, or click the top link in the description. You deposit $20, now you got 40. Deposit 50, now you got 100. You deposit 100, now you got 200. Take advantage of it. That De'Aaron Fox free square, we'll use it on a little bit later on in this video. You can see how I'm using it. But let's actually dive into my first play of the day and it's going to be a guy by the name of Jordan Poole and I like his under 18 and a half points minus 110 on Barstool now Poole if you needed this line at 17 and a half fine there although I probably prefer his under 24 and a half PRAs if the you have 17 and a half or 24 and a half PRAs probably lean towards the PRA line but let's talk about Poole because we know he's a microwave scorer Poole could go out there have zero points at halftime and still hit this over like that's gonna that could happen he could also have 16 points at halftime and still go on that's just what he is he's always ebbs and flows with this guy and i'm fading him today and this is why now the warriors in my opinion they're taking on the kings they're on the road in sacramento in my opinion the warriors if they try to outscore the kings that's playing into the king's wheelhouse we know this king's offense one of the best in honestly league history in terms of metrics their defense not all that good but if they're going to get into a, just a shootout against the kings that's exactly what the kings want i think the warriors have to win this on the defensive side of the court and unfortunately for Jordan Poole, not a great defender. So we look at a guy like Klay Thompson, Stephen Curry, Draymond Green. Those all three guys playing their minutes. They're going to get 35-ish minutes today. But we look at other guys. DiVincenzo, very good defender. We got Kevon Looney, probably going to play a good big series here because DeMontis Sabonis is out there. And then Gary Payton, uh, Gary Payton off the bench has been pretty good. And then Andrew Wiggins, also back. So there's a lot of different guys out there, as in addition to Jonathan Kaminga, that are going to play minutes. Now, Wiggins isn't going to play 40 minutes off jump, but I do think he's going to play meaningful minutes here. And all I know is that Jordan Poole not a great defender we've seen him come in he makes some dumb decisions and he's also capable of just going out there and fou fouling people and he might not play a ton of minutes here so we've seen jordan pull his last three games against sacramento two 18 and eight points going under in all three but the big thing like i've talked about are the minutes 22 20 and 19 minutes in those three games now the 19 was most recently in a couple games like the, the kings rested all their starters so i don't really want to look into that game but the other games were when they were healthy earlier on in this season he wasn't seeing a lot of minutes and we saw pool he averaged 20.4 four points per game this year in 30 minutes per game i just don't see this series being one where he plays 30 minutes consistently and we look at pool under this line in 14 of his last 25 games with less than 30 minutes he's also under this line in 10 of his last 13 with less than 25 minutes we saw pool last postseason granted he is a different player he's obviously has another year under his belt last season we saw them not play jordan pool a ton in the postseason in fact in his last 14 playoff games a lot of those in the nba finals he was under in 12 of 14 in the two games he went over he shot 66 6.7% from the field and 70%. So sure, if Poole goes out there, plays 20 minutes, but shoots 80% from the field, he's probably going to go over. But I think this Kings team is capable, especially on the on the second unit with Davion Mitchell heading that unit. So I think the Warriors here are going to have to play their own stars. We know the Stephen Currys, the Clay Thompsons, the Draymond Greens of the world. I just don't see a guy like Poole being the guy that comes in here. I think Kevon Looney plays a big role in this series. Well, we see Looney playing 25 to 30 minutes and while looney's great you know holding down some bonus they're going to need perimeter defenders that are good at switching and guarding to other guys like De'Aaron fox malik monk those guys i don't see pool as that guy see divincenzo see gary payton those guys being better defenders even jonathan kaminga a pretty solid defender too so i'm gonna fade jordan pool here i think this is too high of a line for him sure could he go out there and drop 25 30 points on my head yes but i'm gonna fade him tonight he also could score like five points we've seen that happen before he's certainly capable of going like oh for 10 from the field so i'm gonna fade jordan pool under 18 and a half points is my first play of the day and for my second play I'm actually going to stick to another under it's going to be DeJounte Murray under 29 and a half PRAs minus 120 on bet 365 now yes a lot of people don't like betting unders but uh, there's so many more ways to cash an under than there are to cash an over if this is a blowout again in Boston probably the under is going to cash for Mr. Murray but that's not the reason we're banking on here although the Hawks are nine point underdogs against the Celtics now we've talked about this before Murray obviously 
has been played a pretty big role for this uh, Hawks team all year long, but the Hawks are very, very healthy, and we'll talk about that in a second, but I just don't like this matchup for a guy like Murray. Now, number one, he's going to have to go out there and guard probably Jalen Brown, one of the best, you know, guys that get into the free throw line, but also a guy that's just good at going to make life tough on the uh, defensive side for Mr. Murray. But on the offensive side, when Murray's on the court, Trey Young's going to be on the court playing a lot of minutes more so than he played in the regular season, and we're going to see Murray probably guarded by Jalen Brown. I think they're going to guard Trey Young with, you know, Derek White or Marcus Smart. I think Jalen Brown's going to be the guy that guard Murray and Jalen Brown's a very capable defender but we've seen you know Murray this season he averaged 20 and a half points per game 5.3 rebounds per game and 6.1 assists per game that's 31.9 PRAs now it's worth noting during a lot of those games he obviously padded his stats when Trey Young missed some games but also the Hawks were not healthy they're as healthy as they come they're about 100% healthy today and Murray's last 25 games we've seen him you know I put the numbers up on the screen under in 14 of his last 25. This is the Hawks team that has a lot of, not annoying guys, but a lot of guys off the bench that are going to go get their shots. Guys like Bogdan Bogdanovich, guys like Sadiq Bey, both guys never seen a shot that they didn't like. They're going to go out there and shoot the ball. Now, previously in the earlier on in the season, they didn't have Sadiq Bey. Bogdan Bogdanovich missed a lot of minutes, and so they weren't really having, it was basically Murray was on the court, and he had to carry that second unit with guys like AJ Griffin, but this second unit capable of going out there and shooting the ball, and we've seen in two games this year versus Boston, Murray, 27 and 22 PRAs, and and 34 and 39 minutes. I don't think Murray's the guy that just comes out here, hits the playoffs here, we're going to play at 43 minutes. I don't think that's the case. And we saw in those games, Murray shot 17 and 18 times. Like I talked about, the Bays, the Bogdanoviches of the world, I don't know if he sees 17 and 18 field goal attempts. Trey Young's still going to get his. We saw Boston allow the fourth fewest points per game, second fewest assists per game to shooting guards this season. And like we said, it's the playoffs. Trey Young is going to get his more minutes. We saw Trey Young kind of limited, not limited, if you will, but more toward like the 32, 34 minutes. Probably going to see upwards of 36, 37, 38. More minutes going to overlap with Murray, which is good for us because Trey Young's obviously going to have the ball in his hands, probably over DeJounte Murray. So, look, the Celtics, pretty good defense. They're going to dial in. It's the postseason. And we've seen Murray. We've been on the bad end of some games where he goes out there and shows, goes four for 17. Yeah, he's certainly capable of getting that done. Look, it's game one. I don't necessarily think the Hawks win this game. I think the Boston Celtics can run away with it. They could blow him out. But look, I've seen games where Murray could have like 25 PRAs going into the fourth quarter. Does absolutely nothing. He's capable of hitting it regardless of what happens. And Murray, who's second half of the season post All-Star break shot, just 27% from the three-point line. I think that's where he's going to have his shots is from the three-point line, not in the paint against Robert Williams. And those guys, I'm going to fade DeJounte Murray. Take his under 29 and a half PRAs. You can take it at 28 and a half his points line at 19 and a half, 20 and a half is probably the individual line you would want. Now, for my third and final play of the day, it's going to be a bankroll builder. These have been good to us all year long. The last one we lost on uh, Vucevic, who didn't want to score 15, scored 14. Today, we got a decent one, and I like this one. It's in this decent value. We got Darius Garland, 15 plus points. Evan Mobley, 10 plus points. Evan Mobley, 6 plus rebounds. And Jared Allen, 8 plus rebounds. This is currently plus 139 on FanDuel. Now, if the line goes up and you get plus 144, Sure, you can take it there. Don't be concerned. In my opinion, I like the bankroll builders because number one, for the most part, everyone's going to be playing the exact same thing. If you need to take Mobley, probably wouldn't take seven plus rebounds. I'm going to say that right now. I'd rather go down to five. If you need Jared Allen, I probably don't want nine plus in my opinion. You probably want to go down to seven if you only got those, you know, five, seven, nine, ten kind of things. But let's talk about this one. And the reason I like these bankroll builders, like I said, everyone's going to be on basically the same thing. So it's not like we're coming down to some hooks, hopefully. And number two, the odds, the odds don't really change a whole lot. This could be better better odds by the time you're locking it in. I think it's a good one. Now let's talk about these ones. Jared Allen, I liked his over nine and a half rebounds as an individual play, but obviously eight plus much safer. In his last four games against New York, he's had 9, 17, 13, and 12 rebounds. Going over this easily. And in fact, Allen, 8 plus rebounds in 22 of his last 25 with 30 or more minutes. The reason I'm on all these Cavaliers, but not any Knicks, although I do have the Knicks, you know, I have the Knicks logo up, because I don't really want to touch any Knicks today. Julius Randle is projected back, and I don't really know how their, their minutes rotation is going to be. But I think all these Cavaliers... I'm going to play like a seven and probably like an eight, nine man max rotation. So all these three guys are going to play a lot of minutes, but I think he at least sees 30 minutes. Now, Evan Mobley, people are like, Austin, you're an Evan Mobley homer. Honestly, I'm not really an Evan Mobley homer. I think there's games where he really stinks it up, but he's normally very consistent at hitting his, hitting his regular, you know, these 10, six point lines, six rebound lines than he is to hit his regular over-unders. He's normally, his normal over-unders pretty sharp. I think he can get these done. Now, 10 plus points and six plus rebounds. He's done this in all six career games against the New York Knicks. That is Evan Mobley. 
globally. In his last 25 games, when he's seen 30 or more minutes, he's had 10 plus points in all 25 and six plus rebounds in 24 or 25. There's a reason I normally target him. He's very consistent. I'm not necessarily asking him to go out there and get 15 and 10 rebounds. No, I don't want to do that. But 10 points, six rebounds and for a guy that's going to play a lot of minutes, going to play on the second unit without Jared Allen, I think he can certainly get that done. I know the Knicks aren't the best matchup on paper, but I think he can get us at least 10 points and six rebounds. And as for the last guy, Darius Garland, to get us 15 plus points. Now he's done that in seven of his last eight first New York. He has 15 plus in 24 of his last 25 with 30 or more minutes. And the Knicks, their main focus is going to be trying to stop Donovan Mitchell. Mitchell's line is like 30 and a half. They're clearly going to try their best to stop him. You can't really stop him. He can still go off and do his thing. But when Donovan Mitchell is not doing his thing, it's going to be Darius Garland out there shooting a lot. He should get the field goal attempts. He's been really good at home this year. So look, I like all three of these guys to do their thing. You got 15 for Garland, 10 and six for Mobley and eight rebounds for Jared Allen. I know the rebounds kind of go hand in hand with Allen and Mobley, but I think that's probably why we're getting around plus 139 value. So I think it's a good one. I'll put a unit on it to win back 1.39. I think it's a solid one. We'll ride with these fellas to get it done in that Cavs Knicks game. And as for my, well, fourth play, technically not, we're not gonna track it towards our record, but it is the sleeper entry and let's talk about it. Now, a reminder, they got the De'Aaron Fox free square just to, for him to score one point. He's going to do that. You can take advantage of that and you can take advantage of the sign up match. You just want to deposit using our code, sign up using our code COS or the top link in the description. You get a hundred percent deposit match up to a hundred bucks. We appreciate everyone that uses that code. Now we're putting these three by plays. You've already, we already talked about all of them. DeJounte Murray's under and PRAs, Jordan Poole's under and points and the De'Aaron Fox, the free square, $20 to win 105. Sure, I'll take a sprinkle on it. $20 is the max for the free square. And then it's a 5.26 payout. Hey, I like what I'm seeing. So we'll take advantage of that. Hopefully our three other plays will all hit. We can bring back over three units back to our bankroll, make back some money. I know it's been ice cold, but we're due some, do some winners coming our way. I think we're going to get back in the winning ways. Two and one minimum, three and oh, hopefully. Love you guys. Have a great Saturday. We'll be live for our no one first inning live stream at four. Love you guys. Have a great day. We'll see you guys back in the next one. Peace out.